Let's have a look at exercise 11C. Question 1A, plot this data set. Well, I use the graphic display calculator. I set up a table and then I use the quick graph function and I looked at the graph and I interpreted these results here. Okay, D is the vertical shift. B here is 360 divided by the period and I estimated the period and A is the amplitude. Okay, now that's pretty close to the answers in the book. And that's from the back of the book. And that's there. So they're pretty close. Okay, let's have a look at two. Now this data set represents water depth measurements at the mouth of a harbour. T is measured in hours from midnight and D in metres. Plot the data set. So I put this into the graphic display calculator as a table, lists and spreadsheets, and then I did a quick graph. And from the graph, I interpreted these. The amplitude is 3, B is 360 on the period, which I estimated as 12, and that was 30. And then D is the vertical shift, and that was 7. So as a function that models this, it would be A, cosine. Now, have you have a look at the curve here. This is actually from the back of the book, but this was similar to what was on my GDC. You can see that this is looking like the cosine curve. It's not going through zero, so we won't use sine, but it's going through here. And so we're using cosine, and then it is 30, B times T, plus seven. Okay, and that looks very, very much like this. Okay, I've used D and T, they've used Y and X. And C, Sam's boat needs the water to be at least six metres deep in order for it to safely enter the harbour. Predict the range of hours between which he can sail in and out of the harbour. So I've, I've put this in a diagram here. That's my midnight there. So if in the back of the book, that would be that point there. And then you can see from midnight uh, to this point here, we solved uh, for T. We knew it was going to be six meters deep, so six meters on the left side, and we have to find T, GDC solve. I found T is 3.65. So that would be 3.65 here. Okay, that's the time there. And then this one here is also 3.65, 3.65, 3.65. 3.65 from midnight, that is 3.65 before midday. That's 3.65 after midday. And this would be 3.65 before midnight. All right, so at least six meters deep, we'll consider that one and that one there, between midnight and 3.65 hours. So it's between there and there, you can see that's at least six meters deep in that period. And also from midday, from 3.65 hours before midday to midday. So that's the period we're looking at. And that would be from 8.35 a.m and midday between there and there. Okay, and that's the answer from the back of the book, and that matches that. That's midnight to 3.65 hours, just from that to there, and between 8.35 and 12 hours, 8.35 hours and 12 hours, that's from there to there, and you can see that's above six metres. Question 3a. This data set represents measurements of part of a sound wave. Time t is measured in seconds and d in decibels. Use technology to plot the data set. Well, I use the GDC and I put these in the table form. And then I use table and then graph. And I looked at the graph and I interpreted these results here. I could see that the amplitude was one. Okay, so here's my diagram. And uh, that's just copied from the GDC. And then I got 360 divided by what I believe is the period. So the period is Point double, uh, point oh 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 six times four, right? It's from there to there. So that's one of those two, three, four. So it's times four. And I've got 150,000. And because there's no vertical shift, I've got D equals zero. So that became sine, because A is one. So it's sine 150,000 T. All right. Now, if you use the GDC sinusoidal regression, the GDC will give it to you in radians. So these are fairly equivalent, but that's in radians, and this is in degrees. Okay, and so that's our answer for B. We just use those numbers there, and we put it in that. So don't forget A is 1, 
B is 150,000 and D is zero. And then we go to C, which I've put over here. Okay, so I've gone B and then C. Hence, predict the decibels of sound after 0 0.00011 seconds. Okay, now I've used the one that's in the book, the back of the book, which is the degrees one. And also it's my one as well. Sine of 150,000 times that, which is T, is 0.284 decibels. Now, if I wanted to use this one, I could still put this in. And remember, this is in radians. So I'm going to uh, keep the calculator on radians and I'm going to put T the same in seconds. And I get about 0.299, so fairly close. This graph here is from the back of the book and it seems to replicate that one fairly well. Okay, we've gone from C to D. Hence, predict the decibels of the sound after 0 0.002 seconds. So we can do that. We're still using this one here. And we've got minus 0 0.866. And that's pretty close to what it is in the back of the book. So we're good with that. E, comment on which of your answers to C and D are more reliable, giving a reason for your answer. Okay, so which is more reliable? Okay, so this particular one here, as you can see, oh, we'll just read it here. It says C is more reliable because it is within the range of the data values. See, these values only go up to 0 0.00135 seconds, and they wanted to get an answer for 0 0.002. So that's whereas D is beyond the largest data value extrapolation, so is unreliable. So this would be more accurate because it's within the data set where this is, this time here is outside. We'd have to go further up here. We don't have information on that, measured data on that. Four. Pam is researching old steam engines. The following diagram shows a representation of a mechanism she is exploring. That's the wheel. AB is fixed at 2.4, that's the radius of the wheel, and BD is fixed at 7.7, .7. so this BD, that doesn't change either. Okay, that length is set. Now D can only move horizontally back and forth, okay, so that's only going to be moving up to there and back. As this comes up here, it's going to push this around the wheel. Now this B is going to go anti-clockwise around, you know, if you can recall what a steam engine wheel looks like. As B moves anti-clockwise around the circle, AD is the distance from the point D to the center of the circle. Okay, from D to the center, that's gonna change. And alpha is the angle DAB, and that's obviously gonna change. Okay, I did this two ways. First, I did the GDC sinusoidal regression, and I got these numbers here. So I put that in as a table, and then I went to menu, and I chose a sinusoidal regression, sinusoidal regression, and I got those. Now, this is of the form A times sine times B times X, in our case it's alpha, plus C. Okay, that's our C. This is what the calculator outputs, plus D, and D is the vertical shift. Okay, now that's different from what we've got here, which is B outside of X plus C. Okay, so the calculator output's different. Also, it's in radians. And then if we put those numbers in, we get 2.54 sine, 0 0.0157 uh, times alpha plus 1.87, and then plus 7.78, the vertical shift. All right. And so that's what we got. And then if you do it by eye using the graph function, so once you put in the table, you can do just plot the graph. And then by eye, you've got A looks like it's about 2.4, B is 360 over the period. It looked like about 360, so that was one. C was zero because now we're, we're considering this C here and we're considering that as zero because we've got BX and then we plus D. So that's why our C here is zero. And then D, the vertical shift is 7.7. .7. And now this one's in degrees and that came out to that. So there's your A, 2.4, uh, cosine of alpha because B was 1, there is no C, and D is the vertical shift, so I've got that. Okay, great, so that's that one. And then, uh, suggest investigate a sign of model for the data. Pam realised that the context would represent it in another way. Okay, good, so we've done that for A. Now, we've done that, that's here. 
Then here, Pam realised that the context can be represented in another way. So we've got this diagram now. And now she says here, B says, calculate AD in terms of the angles alpha and beta and the lengths AB and BD using the cosine rule. So there's our cosine rule there. All right. And uh, we're going to have a look at that. And you can see that we're going to use this angle here. Now, that angle is 180 minus alpha minus beta because they did ask in terms of alpha and beta. So this is going to give us in terms of alpha and beta because we're going to use that angle and AD. So the cosine rule is that this length here squared equals this squared plus this squared minus 2 times that times that times the cosine of that angle. And that's represented here. And we've put all of that in and we get that and we get AD equals the square root of that. And that is great because there's our alpha, there's our beta and it's in terms of AD. Hence or otherwise, comment critically on the fit of your model. And this is from the textbook. Model is reasonable fit, but not accurate, as the cosine rule depends on two angles, not just one. Okay, because the measurement of two angles. Because you've got to measure that and that to find that angle. Okay. Let's have a look at number five. The times of sunrise and of sunset in Reykjavik Island. Island. <laughs> and Iceland, on the first of each month, are represented in this table using hours and minutes. So that's 11 hours and 20 minutes. Now the first thing we've got, that's a rise, that's the set. Calculate the times in decimal notation. Explain why this is necessary. This is from the back of the book, makes sense. So they can be graphed on the Cartesian plane, which uses decimal notation. So how do we get to 11.33? Uh, well, it's 11, that's hours, plus 20 divided by 60 minutes, and we get 11.33. Here's another example here. That's that one. 21.49, well that's 21 plus 49 on 60, which is 21.82. So that's how we get that column and that column there. B, find sinusoidal models for sunrise, RT, and for sunset, ST. Now we use GDC regression again. So these is, we put this in the table, excuse me, we put this in the table on your GDC. And then we come up with this. And remember, this is the form that the calculator gives, and it's in radians. So we've got 3.885 for A. B is 0 0.509. C is 1.789. And the vertical shift D is 7.324. That's for the rise. The sunset is the same, and we've got different numbers there. But they're in radians. We need to keep that in mind using the GDC regression function. Okay, let's have a look at C. Draw the graph of this, hence estimate. Now, all that is is a difference between the sunrise and the sunrise here and the sunset. So the sunset minus the sunrise. Okay, and that's uh, what this gives us. Now, it's just the difference here. So we can just go back to the original times. Okay, so what they're asking is the difference between the sunrise and the sunset in hours, uh, decimal hours here. So it says the number of days in the year with at least 18 hours of daylight. So if we just take the difference, that's 23.45 minus 3.4 gives us 20.05. So these red numbers here are all greater than 18 or equal to 18 because it says at least 18. So that's three months, June, July, and August because that's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Well, if that's uh, three months, it's 90 days. So that's the answer there. Two, the fraction of a year with at least 12 hours of daylight but no more than 18. So I've used blue here. Well, that's more than 12. The difference is more than, that's less than 12, right? So that's more than 12, more than 12. That's, that's greater than 18, so we can't include that. That's greater than 18. That's equal to 18. That's okay. No more than 18. So we've got these ones. We've got this one, this one, that one, and that one. So that is four of them. And that would be April and May and August and September. And that's four months of the year, so it's four on 12, which is got one on three.